Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We will be waxing number 14, a maxillary left first molar. And this is a class two preparation. Remove the tooth from the visitant. And begin marking in your boundaries. Now on this tooth, we are going to be replacing the mesial marginal ridge the mesial lingual cusp tip and part of the mesial buccal cusp. The line in the central fossa area is made just mesial of that oblique ridge. You will not be waxing the oblique ridge. Part of the mesiolingual cusp, mesial to the oblique ridge, part of the mesial buccal cusp, and almost to the CEJ on the mesial margin. Please have your instructors check this outline for you. Replace number 14 in your visitant and do an analysis of how much wax you must place in this tooth preparation, class two cavity preparation, to rebuild the anatomical structures, the heights of contour. The mesial marginal ridge must be of equal height to the distal marginal ridge of number 13. And the contact area must be properly placed. Remember, the mesiolingual cusp apex must be placed toward the buccal surface of this tooth. This mesiolingual cusp is a supporting cusp and therefore has a centric stop in the central fossa of number 19. Turn your visit on to the lingual, as if you are sitting on the tongue, you must rebuild the mesiolingual cusp to that centric stop, which is the central fossa of number 19. I would suggest you remove number 14 to place your first increments of wax. would also suggest that you have a maxillary first molar close by so that you can keep referring to it. Your heat source, wax, and the tooth in close proximity. Remember your fulcrum. Thin layers of wax 
just to the marked boundary. When you have the wax placed to those boundaries, I would then suggest you replace the tooth in your visitant. in and make sure the collar is secure on the pin. Then you can see how much wax needs to be replaced. The next two areas would suggest that you build up your height of contour on the mesial. to the proper contact area and your mesial marginal ridge so that it approximates number 13. The next step begin working on your mesiolingual cusp apex. You place wax instruments, increments, excuse me, toward the buccal surface of the tooth, then close your visitant, check it again from the lingual to make sure that it's the proper length and the proper placement for that centric stop. Continue waxing. I have added some more wax and again I'm checking the lingual surface to make sure that supporting cusp is situated properly. And from this position, it looks as if it is. Let's see if I can show you. Here it is. When you place the teeth in occlusion by closing the visitant, there are some areas that the tooth is hitting, the opposing teeth are hitting too high. So my mesial marginal ridge must be carved down. I have a contact area in this place of the wax. I'm going to have to remove some wax there. And my cusp apex seems to be placed properly. For carving this tooth, flat end of your beaver tail and also your cleoid discoid would be the best instruments to use. Reduce the height of the mesial marginal ridge. And again, the only way this is going to work is if you have a good fulcrum. We have the mesial pit, should be right about there, a central groove and a central fossa. To remove wax from the central fossa, 
use the discoid end of your 5C carver. Remember we have a triangular ridge, the mesial buckle cusp, and we also have a triangular ridge of the mesial lingual cusp. For carving this one, cleoid end would be the best. Things we will be looking for in this particular tooth when you have it checked out is to make sure that the margins are flush, that there is no wax beyond that cut margin, that you have your mesiolingual cusp apex placed toward the buckle and situated in the centric stop of number 19, that your mesial marginal ridge is of proper contour and proper height and of proper thickness. Now this one is a little bit too thick yet to be checked in, so I will have to reduce that and probably will use my cleoid discoid carver. I'll also be checking the placement of the central groove and it should follow along with the adjacent teeth, you're looking for a mesial pit and your central fossa. The central fossa also receives a supporting cusp, which is your distal buccal cusp apex of number 19, and that must be placed correctly. When you are finished with that, Take a piece of wet cotton and your nylon, polish it up for us, and then let us check it when the tooth is in the visitant. Number 30 has been prepared for a class one restoration. Mark in the boundaries as I have done with your number two pencil. When you have done this, please have your instructors check this. I have added wax off camera so I can show you how to begin carving this tooth into occlusion. For this exercise, I would suggest you use your 5C carver and I would use the cleoid end of this carver. You lay part of the carver on the tooth surface and the tip end of the carver into the central groove. The central groove should follow the central groove of the adjacent teeth. So a portion of the carver up on the tooth the tip of the carver into the central groove. You have a triangular ridge of your mesiolingual cusp, the lingual groove, the triangular ridge of your distolingual cusp, the triangular ridge of your distal cusp, the triangular ridge of your distal buccal cusp, and the triangular ridge of your mesial buccal cusp. You also have a mesial pit, a central fossa. For this, I would use the discoid end and your distal pit. When you feel the margins are flush, take your cowhorn explorer and check.
Take a wet piece of cotton, your cotton forceps, and polish it down. Replace the base in the Visidant and again check and make sure the key lock is in proper position. Close the Visidant and check and make sure that that centric stop is in proper placement for the mesiolingual cusp of number three. When these criteria have been met, please have your instructor check this tooth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.